Hello, my name is Brian James and I'm a product specialist at Sensible Technologies. This is Freeform Modeling Plus version 9. The following demonstration will give a brief introduction into how Freeform can be used to create medical implants that match perfectly with scanned data of a patient. On the screen here we have two items. The light tan one is the imported polygon file converted to virtual clay of a pelvis of a patient and uh, the purple body here, the cup, is an implant uh, designed in another package and imported as a parasolid file. Uh, I'll hide the parasolid here in the object list for a second to show you the injury to the patient's pelvis here. Uh, this section, this pocket called the acetabulum, is corroded and needs an implant. That cup is the implant. Uh, the use of freeform here is going to be in constructing tabs that come off of the edge of this cup and mesh perfectly with the scanned data, um, the bone of the pelvis of this patient. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you a workflow that involves uh, half a dozen tools or so in Modeling Plus. And the first one is going to be uh, a curve drawing tool. So I have this pen stylus here and and I can physically go in with the phantom desktop device and I'm I'm physically touching uh, this cup here and I can rock around on the inside of it. I can also feel the clay of the uh, pelvis as well. Um, what I want to do is I want to draw a couple lines, a couple curves that are going to um, span this distance uh, between this edge and this edge. Uh, but before I do that actually I think what I need to do is extract curves off of these edges. So I'm going to take a, the extract from edge tool and just select one, two, three, four, and I'm going to go back to our pen drawing tool. And now I have two curves that I can touch and I physically, haptically, we call it, snap to these curves. So it's very fast to, to make your way around in the program with the use of touch. Um, I'm also going to specify that these are going to fit to the surface of this uh, solid as well as split any curves that it comes in, they come in contact with. So here I'm going to make one click, two clicks, and one click, two clicks, and you can see as I highlight these curves here just by uh, mousing over them and touching them that there are four individual curves now. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. These are representing these spots where the tabs are going to come off of um, the cup here that is the implant. And I'm going to do one more over here. So it's very fast to lay out the position of where these tabs are going to come from. Um, the next thing that I want to do is I want to create some additional curves, uh, but these curves are going to be fit to the pelvis. So instead of, let's delete that, instead of fitting to the solid, I'm going to click this button here, which is fit to clay. And so let's do this, this curve uh, network right here. And I'm going to fit these curves to the clay. One, two, three and hit E to end that curve and one, two, three, four down here. And all I really want to do is make, if you imagine the end of the tab, where it actually makes contact with the pelvis, uh, that's what I'm drawing out here. And so I'm and I'm haptically snapping. I get that physical snap into those edit points. So it's really fast to know when the curves are touching each other and lined up. I'm using a hotkey, the letter S, to actuate the select tool here. So I can go and touch that curve and you see that I have um, the, ha the handles, the tangency handles that I can physically touch and pull out all the time this, uh, this curve is remaining stuck to the clay. It's stuck to the surface there. So if I rotate a little bit like this, you can see these curves, even though I was touching the clay, are fit to the clay. Um, they are sucked down onto the clay. And, and we're almost done with uh, laying out the geometry of this tab. Um, the next step is to go into uh, our curve drawing tool. Again, I seem to have broken that, so let me just refix that for a second. There we go. And I'll go into the curve drawing tool again. And I'm going to turn off snap to clay uh, because I want these curves to be free floating in space. And I'm going to make three clicks here, one at the beginning, one at the end, and one in the middle. So one in the middle and one at the end. And now I'm going to uh, go back into that select tool 
and I'm going to reposition these curves. This is the area of the the underside of the tab that will loft over this acetabular periphery ridge. And what we're going to do here is just take these tangency handles and I get that snap when I'm tangent uh, to those adjacent curves as well. And I'm rotating uh, using the G key and the movement of the the haptic device to simply uh, orient my view so that I know how this uh, is going to undulate across the surface. So let's go ahead and create tangency as well with this shared curve uh, right along there. And what I want to make sure is that I give enough room uh, around the acetabular periphery so that in the operating room um, anything that's been changed uh, using the ball shaped reamer uh, to dig out any uh, adjacent bone material that anything that's changed from the time that the scan was taken um, won't be affected. Uh, that's why the area of the tabs that's fitting to the clay is actually down here on the pelvis. Um, so we're ready to go into the next function which is I'm going to create some NURB surfaces based on these uh, curved networks and the first surfaces that I'm going to create are, are not going to be fit to any clay. They're simply going to be um, representations of their boundaries. So you can see here that uh, that surface that was created using those free-floating curves is not sucked down to the clay. Um, now for this surface here, I'm actually going to specify to fit to clay. And I'm just going to say OK. Uh, oops. Just undo that for a second. I didn't want to fit that, so let's go back and I'll leave that function for a second, re-enter it, and this time with the settings of fit to clay, I'll choose that boundary, and that has now been sucked down to the surface of the clay. I'm going to raise my patch display properties a little bit here so that you can see the uh, surface that I just created uh, a little bit more tessellated than the default setting with a higher degree of tessellation. And now we have three surfaces. There's one on the edge there, uh, this one over the, the ridge, and the one that's fit to the, the scan data of the pelvis. Uh, what I want to do is I want to take these three surfaces and stitch them together into one surface. So right now I'm going to do that just by clicking all down here and stitch those three surfaces together. So now we have three surfaces that are stuck together. Uh, only one of them is fit to the clay, and it's represented here in the object list. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, in my patch display properties, I'm going to turn on something called shade with backface color. And you can see that uh, what that does is it shows me the direction in which this surface uh, normal is pointing. And uh, that's important to us here because we want to thicken this collection of surfaces into a distance of uh, a few millimeters um, that will represent the thickness of the tab. Uh, red is the direction they'll thicken to, so everything's fine. If they were pointing in the opposite direction, I would simply go into the object list and select flip here for that patch, and, uh, and it would be stitched to, um, the direction of the normal would be flipped uh, towards the clay instead and therefore any thickening would occur in the opposite direction. Um, here I'm going to go into um, a function where we thicken this sheet. So I'll select um, the sheet in the object list to thick, uh, select all of it at once. And then I'm going to go down here and select an edge sharpness of uh, 0.35 millimeters and a thickness of uh, five millimeters. I don't know, actually, let's make that four, four millimeters, and then we'll say OK. We'll apply that, and what that's going to do is create a thickened representation of this surface uh, in virtual clay that then we can sculpt and model however we see fit. Um, and you can see the representation here. What's happened to the patch, however, is it's disappeared and it's been replaced by um, a piece of clay. If we wanted that surface data, uh, we would just export it simply as an IGES surface before the thickening process as well. Um, here I'm going into uh, smooth out these edges simply uh, by touching them. And I have a smoothing tool right here. And I'm just going to walk along the surface and smooth it out manually using the phantom desktop device to touch the edges of this tab I've created. Um, anything that's implanted in the body obviously we don't want any sharp edges on it so we're going in and, and smoothing out the geometry so that it's as uh, amorphic or organic in nature as, uh, as possible. Um, now this was a very straightforward layout uh, method for these for the tab here um, in terms of its shape. It's very rectangular, but the options are limitless. 
and the type of geometry that could be created here. The, uh, the usefulness of this model immediately can be seen uh, with the, uh, the use of rapid prototyping machinery. Um, in addition to freeform, we can mill or uh, RP a prototype of this uh, implant, or we could actually RP the uh, the direct implant itself if we were utilizing something such as uh, SLS technology and uh, printing out in a um, a metal alloy. So here we're uh, simply just smoothing out all these edges and getting it to be as uh, doughy as possible, so it's friendly on the inside of the body. Now the uh, portion of the tab that is is not um, clay at the moment is still this solid. And what I want to do is uh, just show you briefly how we can uh, combine um, this tab into that solid. So we're going to convert that solid, just like we did the sheets, to clay and then combine it to this tab. Uh, but very quickly you can see that we have geometry now that that rises over the acetabular periphery and fits to the geometry of the pelvis. Uh, in a very, very short modeling period of time. Um, so let's go ahead and select uh, this solid that we have here and convert that solid to clay. Uh, we're going to choose the exact same clay coarseness setting of 0.35 millimeters. Uh, it seemed to be a good resolution for the patch, um, for the, uh, the surface of the tab, rather, as well. Now, the difference between uh, creating a uh, clay version of the solid is that uh, from creating a clay version of a patch is that the solid remains and uh, we can go back to that at any point in time. Uh, the representation of it as clay here is this bottom piece 3 in the object list and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, combine into uh, this piece here which is the tab that we just created. So I'm merging these two clay bodies into one and uh, let's zoom in here on on the juncture, and you can see how they've started to mesh together. Uh, let's turn off all our curves for a second here so we get a better look. I'm going to go in here with uh, the smoothing tool again and simply touch that, that area and smooth out that geometry. Um, you can do this in a number of ways. You can do this manually like I'm doing now, or you could, uh, we'll undo it, we'll do it a different way. You could paint a selection area um, right here. Let's just make this a little bit smaller. So you could just simply paint a selection area and get the other side there without even looking at it. And then apply a smooth level that's about medium here. And we can see how that's rounded that out. Um, one way to get a very consistent smooth is to select the entire object that you're smoothing. Um, and you'll see that the, the result here, after I apply this, is that the edge around the cup will uh, have a uniform fillet or a uniform round. Um, so that's my preferred method for this particular use. Uh, so very quickly, we've created a volume here off of uh, the imported solid. Uh, what I'd like to do is um, open a portion of the file that is finished so you can see how the model would look after all three tabs are created. And here is the finished product. Uh, we have three tabs fit perfectly to the scanned data and you can see that they also remain uh, an even thickness all the way along as they wrap around the clay. Uh, this was done using that surface uh, method where the surfaces are fit to the pelvis and also unfit from the pelvis to get around the acetabular uh, ridge here. And that is how Freeform is of huge benefit to modeling custom prosthetic implants. Thank you very much.